We're going to do things uh, a little bit different in the order. I want to uh, do the Bible pledge first. And then I'm going to walk you through the timeline just as a refresher. And then we'll go into the scripture reading. Uh, scripture, if you want to get there, Revelations 13. We'll read 15 through 18. Revelations 13, 15 through 18. If you don't have a hard covered Bible pull out your phones I want you to see it I need you to read it I need you to have it in front of you there's a lot that we're going to cover and I want to make sure that I preach it or teach it uh, the, the way that I studied it uh, and my prayer is that God would give me the grace to convey this word in a way that you can understand it and receive it how many say amen to that we're on a sermon series that is called the end times today I'm going to speak to you about the system I'm going to speak to you about the mark of the beast the antichrist and we're going to cover that here today would you do me a favor would you repeat after me your word is written in my mind your word is hidden in my heart your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light for my path I will seek you with all my strength I choose to live my life according to your word your word O oh Lord is eternal you may be seated I pray that you've been enjoying this sermon series and I got I got good news that we've been getting so much feedback people have been diving into the word studying it for themselves People have been asking a lot of questions. So we've decided for the month of November in, on Wednesdays that we're going to continue the teaching on the end times. I want you to prepare yourself. And, and, and if you have a place where you can write questions down, I want you to do that. We're going to give you an opportunity next week to be able to write down any questions you have about the end times. A sermon that we preached that possibly you needed a little bit more insight. We want to try our best in answering questions, theological questions, uh, basic questions. And throughout the month of November, we want to be able to sort those out and answer them as we continue in a teaching, a deeper teaching on the end times. And Pastor Ephraim is going to take us through that. If there's anyone uh, that, uh, that, that you want to hear from when it comes to the end times, this Pastor Ephraim. I've been leaning in a lot in regards to this teaching throughout the month with his wisdom and knowledge. I want to give you the timeline. Let's talk about the timeline for a moment. For those of you who are here for the first time, I'm going to try to do my best in catching you up and uh, what we've been talking about. This is the timeline. The timeline is exactly where we sit is the present church age it is the right now the next event that we're waiting for is called the rapture you won't see the word rapture in scripture you'll see the word caught up and the Bible says that the first that are dead will rise and then those that are alive will rise they would be caught up uh, when we are raptured, we're going to, the world is going to enter into a seven-year tribulation. So while we're in heaven, there's two things that we're going to do within that time frame. Number one is that all Christians are going to be judged. So your works here on earth matters. The Bible teaches us that there will be rewards. So you will be judged based on your works here on earth. And the second thing is that we're going to party like it's 1999. I mean, we're going we're gonna to feast. Uh, we're we're going we're gonna to have a, a, a time where we're going to have the supper with Jesus. It, it's going to be an amazing time in heaven. Now, while we're in heaven and uh, there is the seven-year tribulation taking place here on earth. The last three and a half years of the tribulation, the book of Daniel teaches us in, in a midweek that there will be a great tribulation. And out of the great tribulation, because there is so much chaos, there is going to be two beasts, and we're going to talk about that, uh, that will be called out, that will work in a partnership to bring order 
They will work in partnership to bring unity, not to just the nation, but to the world. Following the seven-year tribulation, then you're going to have the return of Christ. A lot of people confuse the rapture with the return of Christ. Pastor D, what's the difference? Well, in the rapture, Christ is going to, uh, we're going to be raptured up. We're going to be caught up. He will not step foot in Israel. But in the second return of Christ, he will come. And guess what? We're coming with him. And we, he is then going to step foot in Israel. So, so these are two different events. Following that, you have what you call the thousand year reign or the millennium reign for a thousand years God would then begin to control and to govern the land there will be a final judgment after the millennial reign after a thousand years there will be a final judgment the final judgment is not for the Christians those are for the unbelievers I gave you the analogy last week for those who have died without Christ right now they're in what you and I would know as jail. They have not yet been sentenced because their sentencing would come during the judgment date. So though those who die now are either in heaven or in hell, their eternal reward yet has not been given. So for those, for those who are unbelievers, only unbelievers will be judged eternally during the final judgment. And then you have eternity. The Bible teaches us that there will be a new heavens, there will be a new earth, and we'll talk all about that next week. Th this is the timeline of the end times. Now I want to read you Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 18. Now, let me just set this up. I want you to read all of Revelation chapter 13. The other two, book, uh, the other two chapters I want you to read and book is Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 9 uh, you will see that some of what is being explained in Revelation chapter 13 concerning the beast is given to Daniel in a vision in Daniel chapter 9 and when you read the scripture you can see the symbolism because it really doesn't make sense if you just read Revelation chapter 13 for instance what does the horns mean all of that is given and explained in Daniel chapter 9 but I encourage you to read Daniel chapter Seven, are you guys still with me? Okay. Revelations 13, we're going to read 15 through 18. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast. Now the time frame is what? Tribulation. The great tribulation, which is the second half, is when these beasts will be called out. So that the image could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image... To be killed. It also forced, I need you to shout out force. All people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads. So that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has inside calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of a man that number is six 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 I want to just start this off by sharing how Satan himself tries to mimic and follow a pattern in which God created the Bible in the book of Revelation teaches us or it highlights a dragon. The dragon is Satan. The Bible talks about two beasts. So the dragon and the two beasts, which are three, is considered the unholy trinity. The trinity, which you won't find that word in the Bible, means that there's three in one. That there is God the Father, there is God the Son, and there is God the Holy Spirit. That there is God, that there is a one God that works in its function, but it is one. Well, now we know that Satan himself has established what God 
has put in place. The dragon functions like God the Father. The Antichrist functions as the Savior, Jesus, Antichrist. The false prophet who points all people to the Antichrist is like the Holy Spirit who points all people to Jesus. This is a game that is called copycat. I got to let you know here today that the only thing that Satan can do is copycat who he wants to be. That Satan himself never established his own throne. It was God's throne that he is trying to take from to be able to have his own throne. It is a game of copycat. What it all comes down to is this. It's power, control, through what? Deception. He wants power. He wants control. And the way that he's going to do it is through deception. Satan knows that his days are numbered. He recognizes that there is birth pains that are taking place he is fully aware of the sequences of events that are going to happen you don't think that he knows what's going to happen he knows the scriptures he knows the word when the great tribulation occurs satan in his desperation he will call out two beasts to be the leading agents of darkness the second beast will be a false prophet Performing miracles. I need you to shout out miracles. He, he would be the one that is paving the way for the Antichrist. Similar to how John the Baptist paved the way for Jesus in the gospel. How Jesus would always preach repentance. But he would always point people not to himself. He would point people to Jesus. Well, this specific beast, the false prophet, will begin to do something very similar. And instead of taking the glory, he will point them to the Antichrist. We all can understand that when we see a miracle or experience one, we give praises to the one that provided it. We give praises to the one that was capable of doing something that was super natural how many of us have experienced a miracle uh, can i tell you that the fact that you woke up this morning with breath in your lungs is a miracle all by itself <laughs> miracles comes in all types of sizes and shapes it comes in different formats in acts chapter 3 i shared with you that peter and john they were headed to a prayer service when they saw a lame man begging while the lame man was asking for money, Peter told them, silver and gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. Through the power of God, he got up and walked. And his gratitude led him to praise the one that healed him. The Bible teaches us that he shouted praises in the atmosphere. The reason he shouted praises in the atmosphere to the one that healed them is because though God used Peter to be the vessel of the miracle Peter and John didn't point to themselves and yet they pointed to the miracle healer they pointed to the one and said I'm not the one that healed you but I know the one that did heal you and his name is Jesus Peter and John did not want to take any of the glory and we have got to be careful because we are people that God would use we have spiritual gifts that God would anoint us with and though God would use us for supernatural miracles I'm here to declare to you we have got to stand in the shadows of God because if God is not in it then there is nothing supernatural that can ever come from it Through the power of God, he got up, he began to walk, he had gratitude in his heart. In the same case, when it comes to the second beast, there will not be a miracle from God. Though people will see miracles, they would not be what you and I call miracles from God. 
it will be called witchcraft. Witchcraft will be performed through the false prophet that is empowered by Satan himself. I want you to write this down. This is key. Witchcraft is manipulated, not created. Witchcraft is manipulated, not created. God is the creator of all things. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Satan is not the creator. So Satan has to grab what was already created and manipulate it. He cannot do something supernatural within his own right, within his own power, without it already being in existence. Are you with me? The divine difference is that Satan doesn't compete with God's power, which means there is power that Satan does have. It just doesn't compete with God's power. The book of Exodus chapter 7, you will see the battle of God's power through a miracle versus the battle of witchcraft through manipulation. Miracles is supernatural. Exodus chapter 7, if I can give you an insight, Verses 8 through 12, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh says to you, perform a miracle, then say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. What God just said is when you throw down the staff, they will see the miracle. Because it is impossible for something that is natural as a staff to convert into a snake. Something that is natural will then convert to what is supernatural. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials. And it became a what? It became a miracle. Pharaoh then summoned wise men and sorcerers and the Egyptian magicians. Magicians, which is plural. Also did the same thing by their secret arts. Each one, we don't know how many, but we know that it's more than one. Each one threw down his staff and it became a what? A snake. Witchcraft. Because God created the miracle, the only thing that Satan can do is manipulate what God has already created. I need you to catch this. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Not just a staff. Oh, I got some good news for people that are in the building today. That no matter what has come against you, no matter if what doctors have told you, no matter if you feel like you are outnumbered by the enemy himself, if God is before you, who can come against you? It don't matter what hitch, it don't matter what curse, it don't matter what has come against you. God is on your side and the Bible says that the miracle will swallow up the odds. Do I have anyone that God has swallowed up the odds that have come against you? Somebody said you were about to get a divorce, but the miracle of God hit your home. Somebody said you only had six months to live, but five years later, there you go still breathing and the lie and the power of God swallowed up. If the sorcerer, magician had more power than God, they would have erased, eradicated, eliminated the miracle, but no. They only can add or manipulate it. God, on the other hand, not only created the miracle, isn't this good stuff? But he eliminated the threats and curse by having the miracle swallow up the witchcraft. When we talk about miracles, we're talking about God's power swallowing up. We're talking about him eradicating, destroying what has compromised your body, mind, and soul. Though the snake came from witchcraft, 
Though it was supernatural through the manipulation, the moment it stood next to God's miracle, it was eaten up. Which is why you got to put all of yourself next to God and let him begin to eradicate everything that doesn't come from him. That's why we got to lean in and put our faith in him. Through God's miracle, or though God's miracle was outnumbered, God's power is greater. It is greater than any odds that comes against it. The outcome may look similar for certain miracles, but the power in which it comes from, the source, is different. The second beast, the false prophet, will convince people. He would convince people with this blasphemous teaching, with this witchcraft. And there are people during the tribulation that will see these, these miracles and give glory to the Antichrist. And people will shout Hosanna and shout praise be to the Antichrist. People will be deceived and they would view these godly powers manifested because one beast would point to the other beast which is coming from the dragon. We must deficiate the difference of the spirit when we talk about the Antichrist. There is the Antichrist or the spirit of the Antichrist and the person of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist and the person of the Antichrist. The person of the Antichrist is the first beast that is making reference to in Revelation chapter 13. Write this down. The word Antichrist means either against Christ or instead of Christ. Against Christ or instead of Christ. It's someone who seeks to tear down Christ. Also tear down those who follow Christ. 1 John 2.18 says, Dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Pay close attention to this. Even now, I need you to shout out now. Many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. The Antichrist is coming is referring to the beast. Many antichrists have come is referring to the spirit of antichrist which is anyone who tries to remove or replace Christ. The Bible refers to them as what? False prophets. Teachers are alike. This, all of these fall in this category. Religions with the removal of Jesus Christ is an antichrist spirit and a heresy that we must avoid you and I cannot believe that Muhammad is the same God that you and I serve what happens when you begin to dive deeper into certain religions the top three religions that are in the world are literally pulled out of the Bible out of the Bible and then begin to add their own ideologies into their Bible the foundation of all of this comes from the scriptures themselves. Why? Because God is the creator of all. And witchcraft can only be manipulated by what was created. Don't you see how the enemy is trying to use what God has promised before us as truth and freedom and manipulate it to deceive those in not believing who Jesus Christ is? And isn't it sad that one of the most challenging seasons in our lives, instead of us coming together, we are growing apart. The spirit of the Antichrist has had Christians reconstruct their faith to now a spiritual journey for a new discovery of what they call spiritualism. Spiritualism. Reconstructing their faith, grabbing scriptures that please them and creating their own religion, creating their own ideologies to suit their passions. The Bible talks about that. That be careful 
know that you're not looking for preachers and teachers that suit your passion. You're looking for teachers, false teachers, false prophets that are going to only confirm what you're feeling. That is called the spirit of the Antichrist. The Antichrist spirit is taking people through their fields and depicting scriptures that suit their ideologies, their, their comforts, their passions. It's so much easier to live this way. It is so much easier. It's easier for me to believe a lie than it is to believe a truth because truth hurts. It's easier for me to, to, to dwell and to live in my passions even if it means that I reject Christ for my own ideologies. Why? Because I'm living in the now and I am not considering the consequences that come with the decisions that I'm making. And the enemy wants to keep the blind blind. Evil leaders and influences such as Adolf Hitler. They, they were not the person of the Antichrist, but definitely carried the spirit of the Antichrist. This is why 1 John 4, 3 says it this way. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the what? Of the Antichrist. Which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. Listen to me, folk. There are so many Christians that they're claiming to be Christians and yet they're living in sin and they rub it off as if there is nothing wrong with it. We have lost the sensibility of holiness. We have lost what it is to have the fear of God. We have lost what it is to have the oldness of the Most High because we constantly want to navigate ourselves into the passions of our lust. Be careful. Be careful. Which is why God gives us permission to test every spirit. To see whether they are from God. When the Bible says to judge them by their fruit. They're talking about the spirit of the Antichrist. Judge the false prophets. Judge the false teachers. Judge those that are heresy. That are teaching you how to remove yourself from God. Rather than you throwing yourself from God to God. The person of the Antichrist will be called out. The person of the Antichrist will be called out during the tribulation. Daniel 9 teaches us that he will make an alliance pretending to bring peace to Israel. That they will be able to rebuild the temples and make sacrifices. And midweek, mid-tribulation, he will turn on them. The Antichrist, he would turn on them and establish himself a God in the temple demanding worship he would please them he would take care of them he would pretend to honor them in the request and once he has gained full control and full power he will turn on them he will build an idol place an image of himself in the temple the temple a place of prayer a temple, a place of worship. A temple, a place of sacrifice. He will place an idol and demand every person to worship him. This is similar to the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel's in the story as well. That the king created an image every time the trumpet sound everyone ought to bow down and worship this image and if you did not bow down and worship this image you will pay a high price for your denial and there goes the trumpet it sounds and everyone bows down except three Hebrew boys Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego stood standing tall while everybody else was bowing down they looked like they were being outnumbered because they were. I'm sure they were scared inside. But yet the Bible teaches us that they were thrown into a furnace fire. It was so hot that when the soldier opened up the furnace, the heat literally killed the soldier. The Bible says that the king whose heart was 
conflicted and only did what he did because of the pressure of the people told the soldiers to open up this furnace and when they looked inside of this furnace not only did they see one person alive or two people alive or three people alive they saw a fourth person that was alive you want to talk about supernatural you want to talk about miracles what happens is that when we operate with the spirit of obedience it will begin to crush the spirit of antichrist people will try to remove god from this nation but they cannot remove god from our hearts people will try to remove faith from you but your faith is embedded in your bones that despite of what the world says you will not bow down to the things of this world why because you are a child of God and no matter what odds are against you if God is for you who can come against he will turn Antichrist will turn on them and according to Daniel's vision I don't got time to talk more about this this is called the abomination of desolation the Antichrist will be powerful and the world not just the nation not just the United States every continent the world the world will be brought together he will bring leadership he will set up a global system with one currency. The global system will be the mark of the beast. Can we talk about this? The mark would be either placed on your forehead or your hand. Some say that it will be a tattoo. Who knows? In some sort of, it's, it's some sort of barcode. That will have the number 666. And most likely has to be scannable. For it would be used as currency and possibly your profile, your medical records, history. I've just learned, I want to show you this. I've just learned that as of recent there are people who have gotten QR codes tattoos. And they're using it for marketing purposes as their profile to share to others. So if you are an entrepreneur, you have a business. You walk around and you give people your what? Your business cards. Technology has advanced that they even have now cards that you can scan and will automatically update to their phone. Well, people are like, I don't want to carry no cards. Let me just get a tattoo of a QR code. And all they have to do is scan this QR code and my profile will be there. And all you got to do is download it on your phones. I am not saying this is the mark of the beast. Are you hearing me? What I'm trying to tell you is that this is all a setup. This is all a setup for the mark of the beast. Can I take you deeper? In recent years, people have implanted a microchip in their hands. No need to carry a bank card. And all they have to do is place their hand over the card reader. This pic that you see is a person who paid for her meal at a cafe. A chip. Now this chip thing has been going on for a long time. They've been doing it on animals. That this is not the mark of the beast. This is only a setup for the mark of the beast. Can I give you one more? In over 500 locations in Whole Foods, this just came out in June, Amazon. Amazon. You, you, you would have options to wave your palm over a new technology where the device will be able to read the lines in your palm. This is only a setup. All I'm trying to tell you is that when the Antichrist does come and creates this global system it is not going to shock people because people are going to already recognize how far along we have come with technology Techno technology has definitely advanced throughout the years and to dictate the world through a global system technology will be the gateway I'm going to use technology to my favor and when I see technology advance, I don't get scared of it. I welcome it. I love FaceTime. I love using my bank card and just tapping the scanner. I welcome technology. So I am not here to tell you, go throw away all this stuff and you're evil and you're, you're going to be. No, I'm not saying that. All I'm trying to tell you is that all of this.
this is lining up so follow me the mark the mark write this down will be required by law and no one will be exempt can you give me five more minutes the law it will be made law and no one will be exempt revelations 13 16 16 and 17 it is it also forced all people forced great and small rich and poor free and slave to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark which is the name of the beast or the number of its name you and I we had a dress rehearsal during COVID-19 how do we have a dress rehearsal the government flexed their power shutting down churches shutting down restaurants shutting down schools demanding demanding what demanding masks demanding shots I am not against shots and masks and if you lean on one side or the other that's that's your choice that's secondary stuff that doesn't tell me about salvation at all I'm not gonna argue with you with that what I'm trying to tell you is look at the dress rehearsal how the government is having power just a few weeks ago all our phones received a signal did you get it it was a test I believe these are all lining up for the end times where the Antichrist will have the technology and the control to dictate you and I we don't we don't struggle with what some of the other nations struggle with we, we we're not a communist nation but there are others that struggle beyond what we struggle with. You know, some will reject the mark despite the law, but they will pay a high price. Okay, remember, we're in heaven during this time, but there will be people that get saved during this time. So the Bible says in Revelation 24, I saw the souls of those. I saw the souls. Uh, you, have, you have John that is that has a vision and he's sharing it with us and he says I saw the souls of those who have been beheaded because of the testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God and those who had not worshipped the beast if they didn't bow down to the beast or his image and had not need you to shut out not if they did not receive the mark upon their forehead and upon their hand so those who refuse to worship the antichrist those who refuse the 666 either on the forehead or on their hand they were beheaded you know during COVID churches and businesses were getting fined for remaining open in other communist countries if you open the Bible you will be arrested and even killed according to scripture if you refuse to worship the Antichrist if you refuse to deny the mark you will be in survival mode because your day-to-day -day living will be compromised your day-to-day -day living will be compromised you wouldn't be able to work you wouldn't be able to buy food you wouldn't be able to pay for housing you will be in hiding if you're found without the mark you will be killed the mark of the beast let's keep moving will be the ultimate rejection towards God the ultimate rejection it is the nail in the coffin revelations 14 11 says and the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever there will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image in other words you will spend eternity in hell or for anyone who receives the mark of its name if you get the mark it is over if you get this mark it is done if you get this mark you have literally defined your future by rejecting Jesus as your Lord there is no more repentant that there is no more salvation so now we've gotten all this information what do we do from here what, what do we do what, what good is this head knowledge without application because I, if you're like me I'm like well I'm gonna be in heaven so I, I, I don't this is not my problem it's not going to be my problem as Christians what do we do with this information we have to have an urgency in soul winning I I'm gonna say this again what do we do with this information we have to have an urgency 
in soul winning an urgency there's got to be a fire in our bones to witness and tell people and testify about Jesus there is no more such thing as sitting down and just coming to church there is no more such thing as playing church living one way in the church and living another way outside of the church there is no more such thing as compromising the Word of God or making excuses there's no more such things we are either in it or we're not we're either for it or we're not we either raise up the banner of righteousness or we do not we have got to have an urgency of so many and in order for us to do that we have got to be connected to the source the birth pains are evidence of the return of Christ and God is looking towards us to be agents of light God is looking towards you to be an agent of light to be the mouthpiece, to be the hands to the feet. We are one body with many different parts. My question that I want to convey to you is what part of the body are you using for the glory of God? Because I know you're using it for your business and you're doing well by the way. I know you're doing it so that you can do this and that you can do that and you can splurge here and you can splurge in that way. I got you. Continue to thrive in that way. But which part of the body are you using for the kingdom, for the advancement of God? How are you using your anointing, your influence in the space that God opened up for you, for his honor and for his glory? What are we doing, new life? The birth pains are evident. So this is what Jesus in Jude 1, 23 says. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others show mercy. To others show mercy with fear. Hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. If you do not hate sin, you do not love God. I had a man that caught, I had a conversation just the other day at the men's retreat. And he asked me, he said, Pastor, how do I overcome this? And I tell them, you just got to love God more. He says, what do you mean? You've got to love God more than your sin. I said, you know why I don't cheat on my wife? Because I love my wife more than lust. You, you know why I don't want to turn my back from God? It's not that my flesh doesn't desire it. It's that I love God more than I'm willing to obey God and make the proper denial and sacrifices. Do you understand the responsibility that we have to be angels of light? The Bible says to be the salt of the earth. You are the flavor that preserves the roots of Christianity, the word of God will outlast any religion that is established and manipulated through witchcraft. The small book of Jude, small book, very, very small book. Matter of fact, if you try to find it, you may skip over it. That's how small it is. It's towards the end. It is right before the book of Revelations and it tells us, to be merciful with those who doubt. It doesn't say be frustrated with those who doubt. It doesn't say lose your patience with those who doubt. It says to be merciful. Have you ever doubted and God's been merciful to you? Have you ever had questions? Have you ever been in a dry season? Have you ever been in a place where you've questioned God's sovereignty? You have questioned God's power? You have you, you questioned God's will? And you were in a bad place and the mercy of God was extended to you and he didn't judge you for it. He gave you the space to mourn. He gave you the space to grieve. He opened his arms and he was waiting for you to run right back. He never left you or abandoned you. You probably went to different roads, experimenting different things and God says I will never leave you nor forsake you as long as you got breath in your lungs I am going to extend my mercy and God says the mercy that I extended on you I need you to extend it to your brother I need you to extend it to your sister I need you to extend it to your spouse I need you to extend it to your enemy I need you to extend the mercy why because mercy is the gateway that will begin to reveal not the true judgment of what our sins deserve but yet the grace in which lifts of the judgment that our sins deserve. God has given us an opportunity for us to run right back to 
through him and he says, I need you to be the agent that creates a bridge to point people to Jesus. There are Christians who are struggling with their faith. Don't give up on them. Engaging in sexual immorality, engaging in lust, engaging in warfare, engaging in a life of sin. Don't give up on them. Love them. Be graceful to them. Be merciful to them. There are people that are suffering. They are ready to come out of their hell. You're on the verge. You're like, man, I'm so sick and tired of just being sick and tired. I'm so tired of running from God. I'm so tired of blaming people for the offenses they've done on me. I am exhausted. I'm frustrated. I'm scared. I'm fearful. I don't want to live like this no more. They're at the edge of hell. And God says, extend your hand and snatch them out. Extend your hand and what? Snatch them out. Extend your hand. Pick them up. Extend your hand. All they may need is a hug. All they need to know is that they're loved and not forgotten. Extend your hand. And just show grace. Speak life. Because when they find themselves like the prodigal son, the Bible says he came to his senses, he's, they're going to come back home. And you know what home is to them? You're their home. You're their comfort. You're the mercy and the grace that when everybody else turned their backs on them, you were the one reaching out to them. When they're in a place where they're ready to come out, who are they going to call? They're going to call you. And God is going to use your arms. And God is going to use your tongue. And God is going to use the anointing on you to display his love. And guess what? When there is a supernatural divine miracle that happens through that moment. Do you know how I got saved, y'all? I got saved through a phone conversation where I said, I don't want to do this no more. You know the first time that I witnessed and I want somebody to Jesus? I did it with a phone conversation. I told them, listen, I don't want to live this way. And I don't know if you want to live this way. But if you want to receive Jesus Christ, I was like 15 years old. If you want to see Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can do it. We did the prayer of salvation right then and there. Today, I need you to shout out today. He is a pastor in Texas. All to the glory of God. Not to David's glory, but to the glory of God. God wants to use you for his glory. I need you to stand to your feet. So don't let your humanistic disappointments and frustration keep you from extending grace. God says, snatch them out. Be there. Be available. For those of you here today, time is ticking. Time is ticking. Many of us, we realize how short time is when you walk into a funeral. And it even hits that much harder when the person you are viewing is someone close to you you realize time is short and time is ticking we got to get our lives right before Jesus I was reading Luke chapter 15 and it talked about the 99 and 1 y'all remember that story but you can't appreciate Luke chapter 15 unless you read Luke chapter 14. I missed something throughout the years as I was reading the scripture. I don't know how I missed this, but in Luke chapter 14, the Bible says that Jesus heals a man on the Sabbath. By the law, you weren't supposed to do that. And they begin to question Jesus. Why would you heal somebody on the day of the Sabbath? And then Jesus decides to have some lunch with sinners. And there goes the religious people. They were looking at Jesus. They're look at this guy. Not only is he healing people on the day of the Sabbath, but he is now eating a steak sandwich with them. Now you go to Luke chapter 15, and as they begin to question Jesus, and how can you do this, and how can you do that, he begins to speak on the 99 verses to 1. He says, wouldn't you rather go after the 1 and leave the 99? You know, the part that I miss is the fact of the audience. Who was Jesus speaking to? 
Jesus was speaking to religious people that held up the law over people. When Jesus came into the story in the New Testament, he flipped the ropes. He held people before the law. And he began to teach everyone else that the ministry of Jesus is not about the Ten Commandments. The ministry of Jesus is about the love of Jesus. I hope you get this in your spirit because we have got to stop killing people with the Ten Commandments. And we got to start loving people with the love of Jesus. He says, this is my commandment. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. You want to talk about healing somebody on the Sabbath? Talk to that man who had a miracle happen to him. I'd rather be healed on the day of the Sabbath by my Lord Jesus Christ than for the law to be placed. Why? Because mercy and grace is extended before the rules and regulations that is put before us mercy and grace is extended to you if you're in this place today and you're saying I need to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior he has come to tell you that the religious people probably cut you down but the love of Jesus has come to welcome you back into his kingdom and I don't know what preachers and I don't know what teachers and I don't know what podcasts and I don't know what people have been feeding your ear and, and has been ministering to your heart but they have been teaching you false and I'm here to tell you Jesus loves you and before you can even turn from your sins you've got to first accept him as your Lord and Savior bow your heads and close your eyes because I believe salvation Salvation is here and I also believe that the prodigals are going to be coming back. I believe those that have run from God, today is the day of salvation. You love God with all your heart, mind and soul. Let him minister to you. He will help you from the inside out. I am not going to judge you by your outer appearance. I want God to minister to you from the inside. From a place that is unseen. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right where you're at, just lift up your hands. We want to pray with you. Today is the day of salvation. I see hands that are lifted. Come on. You want to make God your Lord? You want to make Jesus your Lord? You, you want to make Jehovah your Lord? You, you, you want to deny religion and you want to pick up the cross and you want to follow Jesus? Today is the day of salvation. For those of you who are prodigals, you've ran, you've ran, and you've ran. And you're so sick and tired of running. You find yourself eating with the pig pants. You look good on social media, but you know that is a lie. And that is a snapshot of moments that you had to edit three or four times before you posted it. Today is the day of salvation. It doesn't matter how the world appears to you. What matters is how Jesus appears to you. No matter the conflicts that you're having in the inside, God says that I will help you. If you're a prodigal, I feel it in the spirit. Just lift up your hands and say, Pastor D, I'm ready to come back to Jesus. I see hands that are lifted. I am ready to come back to Jesus. I begin to pray the religious spirit moved off of you. I pray that the religious spirit, come on, every witchcraft, every curse, every manipulation, every deceitful spirit shall be taken from you. You shouldn't be living with thoughts of suicide. Come on now. You shouldn't be living with thoughts of negativity. You are a child of God. 